Hey guys, there's a video I've been wanting to make for a while, and it's about ergonomics on a chainsaw. A lot of people always ask, what is the best saw, or what should I get, or, you know, whatever reason. Realistically, you know, a lot of people are looking for a price point. So price point's great to look for. You know, you have a budget. You, you got to meet that. The next step is one, does it meet your needs? And then two, how's it feel in your hand? Because saws are not made the same. Now, I have two totally different style of saws on the table here. All right, this is not a comparison one between the other. They're two different completely ranges, but they show some features that are easy to kind of point out ergonomically one direction versus another. Neither one of these is right and wrong on how they do this. I guarantee you one will feel good to one person and not to the other and vice versa. You know, it just kind of depends on how it fits you. And these saws are designed to fit a certain person. They're engineered to cut wood, but you can tell they're by different designers. So starting at the front here, one thing is you'll notice the handles. One has more of a curve to it. The other one, this one here is a little bit more straighter. There are others that are in fact completely straight with that felling line. You see that felling line there to there? There are other brands that make that 100% straight across there. This one has a little bit of an angle. This one has more of an angle. Another thing is the space between the brake and there. So as one-handed operation, when that's in your hand, I'll show you on this one here, so we turn that around. That brake locked on is being able to lock it quick and easy. That's actually one of the features that I really look for is a brake that I can lock just with the back of my hand. Some are a lot easier than others. This is actually about the extent of the reach of what I'm what I look for in a saw in that particular area. So now that I have that spun around, let's go ahead and look at a couple other things. And you can see from the back that angle. Um, another thing is the distance between your back handle here and your front handle. That kind of gives a different leverage, a different feel all together. Uh, you, so it's hard to tell in a video, I know, but as you grab these saws and actually start playing with them, that's where you know a lot of your expert saw shops will try to put a saw in your hand to what feels good. If I get you a saw that feels good, guess what? You're going to keep coming back to get that saw that fits you, not the saw that fits me best profit-wise. You know, if I get you comfortable and get something that works with you and help kind of tailor fit it, so to speak, that's always going to be a better option. Um, the brake, or the back handle angle is another one. And I'll see if I can get both of these in. You can see the Dolmar in the back has more of a swoop to it, whereas Husqvarna is a little straighter. All that means is this area, how your wrist fits on there. One will just automatically feel better and more secure to the other. You'll also notice some of the triggers. Some are a little wider. Some are a little narrower. It just kind of depends. The brake or operator presence switch throttle lock That'll operate differently for other people. You know, how they drop in and feel. Good, bad, like I said, it's what fits you. That's going on, there's a little bit of an angle difference here. Also, there's a balance difference on where this balances. You'll notice when I talked about this angle of this bar here, that'll fit your wrist a little differently. One will always feel a little bit more comfortable than another whether it's straight across, whether it's at steeper angle, whether it's in between. Um, when looking at this, what feels comfortable, you also want to look at that blade, because this is where you're bucking at. So you want to make sure that that bar and that chain is straight up and down. If you're holding it, what's comfortable to you, and it's an angle, well, you're always going to be bucking a little bit off to an angle. That's part of it. So there's that balance there. Also, when you're doing your side cuts, here, how the saw feels there. 
they're weighted different, what bar is on there, to just the balance of the saw, where this lines up, and then this is your downward cut here. Your hand will fit in a spot here, just kind of fit there, and it gives you that downward angle. Some will feel better than others, so this is basically your notch cut. You have your side cut, and then straight down. So that'll get your notch. Also, if you're going for a humble, where that fits in your hand and how that feels. By doing that with your throttle locked, where your wrist is, some are more comfortable than others. My hand's in a little different spot. My wrist sits a little bit differently. Where I grab back here is a little different. Grabbing on my side cut. You'll notice that bar tips way up. This is a 16 inch bar on this. Is that bad? No. That just means there's more weight in my right hand. Some people prefer that. Some people like that. Uh, put a different bar on there. That changes that completely. Again, you have your notch cut, side cut, cross cut, and then your limbing. This is another feature that by the design of this handle, how that spins in your hand while you're holding this, going from one to the other. If you're doing a lot of limbing on evergreens and stuff like that, this is very important to you and how that feels. How much stress does it put on your wrists? Okay guys, so one last thing that I want to point out is like the distance from the back of the handle here to the front handle. Sometimes that makes a little bit of difference to people. All in all, and finishing, you know, basically all this video is about is not every saw will feel as good as another saw will. There's always just one that fits you. So when you're saw shopping, when you're looking for something, grab a bunch of them. See whichever saw shops will actually let you put your hands on the saw. Cut with them. I mean, if you come into my shop tomorrow, you can run this as long as you want with whatever you want. Let me know if you want to run one of these others. I don't care. You know, because like I said, I want to make sure I, I get a saw that you like that you want to go out and cut wood with. That's, you know, that makes a big difference. Whether I sell it or not, if I make sure you're happy, I'm happy. You know, that's just kind of how I roll. Uh, but all in all, Take your time and enjoy, you know, making sure you get the right choice because the right saw you're going to use a lot more. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching this. Hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment. I really do enjoy all your comments. I enjoy talking back and forth with you. I like your ideas, good or bad. You know, even if you ridicule me on me not knowing how to cut wood as good as the next guy. I get it. I'm cool with that. I like hearing your feedback, and I know others can garner some information from it. So, pour them in. Let, let me know what's going on. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, ask them. You know, have fun, be careful, and just enjoy yourself. One quick note when shopping for these saws, or for your saw, that I want to point out is since price point is such a strong purchasing you know perspective or you know influence purchasing influence that try to leave yourself enough money to grab some safety gear i'm not kidding guys accidents happen a pair of chaps 60 70 80 bucks you know i don't care where you get them a helmet with a face guard good gloves good boots be smart about what you're doing you know, if you can only afford a $300 saw, look at a $150 saw. I'm not kidding. And grab yourself a good pair of chaps, a good helmet, good gloves, good boots. They'll last you quite a while. If you can afford a good $300 saw and that stuff, do so. Try to be rational when you budget this stuff in. It really is important. It really is, you know, good to just focus on your safety most of the time we're out in the woods by ourselves one little snag in your leg with the chain that's running 13,000 rpms 
it does things to your legs that you do not want to see and you don't want to have happen to you, you may not make it back onto that four-wheeler or tractor or whatever you have out there. It's only a few seconds and it's not a good scene. I've seen them. I work with a lot of companies that deal with it. Be careful. Enjoy what you do and make sure you come home. Have a great day. It's kind of funny because at this angle, they all look like they're in the size smallest to largest. Then you step over to this angle here, and it changes. <laughs> Just interesting how they're all so different at times.